There he is. There he is. Okay. This is the inaugural episode of the podcast. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to be discussing inane nonsense mm -hmm. and possibly something with more of a theme if I decide on that at some point <laughs> in the future or during this. More people are going to know you than me. Well, it's your first podcast. Let's talk about you first. Let's get you like, who is the podcast? Who is this man that we are allowing our ears to be uh, christened with his beautiful masculine voice? All right, listen, I'll break it down really simply. A log line, if you will. Mm -hmm. Not a communist. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. That's, I'm going to put that right out there. I'm on the <laughs> fence. I'm still considering dropping the comrade from Comrade Bodko just <laughs> for complete clarity. Definitely no affiliation with red stars or hammers or sickles of any variety. Nice. Well, in this day and age, communism is cool, so maybe you should keep it. And we already yeah, started yeah, with just... the political stuff. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I w <laughs> Not that I mind discussing it for politeness sake or anything, but I think mm -hmm. we agree pretty evenly on, you know, most, most things. The, so yeah. I don't think it would be all that interesting to hear us jerk each other off over various conservative viewpoints. Yeah. So, so to give a summary. Introduction. I'm Sean Bodkin. My tag online is Comrade Bodko. I'm a freelance animator. The most widely viewed of my work is probably a bunch of cartoons on Arcade Cloud. Um, nice. And aside from that, the Sleepy Cast animated with the crab. Yeah. Uh, yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with me here is Perry Hull, who has Howdy. who has a slightly better repertoire of internet appearances, <laughs> I think is safe to say. The way that I put it is I am a, an F-less internet celebrity, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably fair. But yeah, I mean, realistically, you've uh, done some some pretty good stuff, I would say. You got, oh, thank uh, you. did that Game Grumps animated, you've done mm -hmm. Safety Man, you've got a lot of I would say very on point internet cartoon type humor oh, that well, people have you. enjoyed. I think that's an apt description. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm the one guy that did the Game Grumps cartoon. Yes, all of them. <laughs> I did them that all. Every last one. <laughs> I, my, 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 su my pseudonym online is Brandon Turner. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you saw any of the comments in the Game Grumps collab that I participated in, but everyone was saying, where's Brandon Turner? Where's Brandon? That was one fifth of the comments. Yeah, I do remember so, that. Yeah. And that's, I, a, that's a hell of a legacy to live up to. Yeah. But enough about that guy <laughs> working on Hasbin Hotel at the moment. I call myself the lead boarder on Hasbin Hotel because I think I've done the most scenes because when, when Viv and I were at CTN, because we shared a table, you know, everyone would go up to Vibs two thirds of the table and, you know, be like, I love it. And it's great. You know, that's it's awesome for her. But it was like her table and then me in like the last third. And then on the other side were these four really nice girls from Warner Brothers. But once <laughs> people came and like, oh, you work on a Unikitty. Like, yeah. And so like I was the parted Red Sea. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you were, and you were the... <laughs> No man's land of fandom. Exactly. Exactly. So, but anytime someone would like be waiting in line to talk to Viv or something like that, they'd give me a pity like, oh, hey, this is really nice. What do you do? I'm like, oh, I, uh, I'm the lead storyboarder for Hasbun Hotel. And then they'd be like, oh, okay. And then they'd actually start talking to me. <laughs> so, um, oh, hey, it's an yeah. in, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I've also, I think like the centerpiece so far in my resume has to be working on Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Not my prettiest work I've ever done, but just the fact that, you know, it's a Comedy Central show and, you know, it followed South Park and then having my name at the credits was, I, I don't right, know, yeah, I, I love that. It, yeah. Your name's on the credits in a TV show. It's a big f***ing deal, dude. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I knew there was something I was kind of forgetting, but yeah, yeah uh, Bento Box is, I think, yeah. a pretty big deal, you know. I Probably the thing most people would know them for is... Uh, Old Bob's uh, Burgers. Bob's Burgers, right. 
right? Mm -hmm. But the Burger Legends Bob of, Man. Yeah, Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Is that only run for the season you worked on it? Uh, or? Yeah, I came in and worked on the second season. So when the first season dropped a little more than a year ago now is when I started. The first episode of the first season aired, and that's when I started working on the second season. And I've worked on, I think, eight of the ten episodes for the second season, and it did not get picked up. It wasn't a great show, but it was still... Yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, special. It's, 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 it's a special thing. <laughs> It's a bigger accomplishment than the vast majority of people in this industry have, given how small the professional talent pool is. Yeah, man. Thanks. Again, I appreciate that. But okay, so that was an in-depth intro yeah, to I'm what gonna, I do. Yeah, I'll cut a fair amount of that so yeah, we're not just rambling about yeah, just our own accomplishments. Yeah, jerking each other off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The thing that you alluded to earlier, I want to mm -hmm. have a slightly more in-depth discussion on, although not on the political side. I think we're both in an unusual demographic as far as artists or animators go, in the sense that this is safe to say from the conversations I've had with you in the past. When we were in high school or when we were kids, we were both a little more on the athletic side than the artsy or like theater kind of mm -hmm. group. Yeah. And I don't think I've spoken to a single other person <laughs> I know who's an artist or an animator professionally who that's the case for. And I wondered if you had any stories or anything that you recall when you were in school or like making the transition because I know you yeah. really got into it in college more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I feel like I talk about this story a lot. Always been into sports um, and, you know, I'm from a very, very small town in Ohio. You know, like I, I grew up in a very small town in Ohio called Fort Recovery and most people's high schools are bigger than my hometown and so I grew up and I'm like all right okay you know everyone's like hey you're a really good artist and at a young age even at a young age I realized okay that's neat I think at 11 I'm like okay I get that everyone says I'm good at this but out of a town of like 1400 people what does that even mean you know so right, yeah the big fish in a small pond kind of thing exactly you know you it, don't have a big pool for comparison so yeah you don't absolutely. know how good you really are at that point Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the time, you know, the Internet wasn't what it is today. We had the Internet. I think we were like the first generation to actually grow up with the Internet. Yes, what, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I was born in August of 91 and you weren't far behind me. Right. Yeah. March of 92. So only about just seven a couple months. months. Yeah. So, you know, we grew up when the Internet was born. And uh, we've always had the internet. Again, I'm kind of going off track, but my point is that it wasn't the same, you know, is what it is now. And probably yeah, the listeners, I, I, they only have this point of reference. It's a bizarre thing, too, because we had, you know, when we were kids, we had the internet, but we didn't because the yeah. internet now is such a specific thing with YouTube and everything. It's very, like, cut and dry. The internet, when we were, like, oh, you know, 10 to, to 13 or so, mm -hmm. there wasn't anything set like that. I mean, YouTube didn't come around until 2006 when we yeah. were both around like 14 years old. So oh, yeah, yeah. Prior to that, like people were starting to post videos in flash players and things. But mm -hmm. yeah, and you had new grounds, but you, you know, got it, new grounds. Yeah. Even all throughout uh, like albino black sheep and stuff like that, too. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, there Ebon's wasn't a world. Yeah, there wasn't a centralized area to view stuff like that. Yeah. You know? If you wanted to find stuff, you still had to hear it through somebody you knew in school or something or you mm -hmm. had to be really like searching around for weird nonsense online yeah and where i came from it was like one of those cliche stand by me kind of things where or you know yeah. just your prototypical you know just you rode bikes yeah we you did rode you bikes know all over and you did stuff <laughs> you threw rocks exactly. at trains and shit. yeah so the internet i mean we use the internet not to the extent that kids use it now is what I think we were trying to get at. But, you know, we used it, but we still were that last fleeting generation. Not that kids don't do it now, but we were that last generation of just like, all right, you know, direct TV was big because like you yeah. had hundreds of channels, you know, but other than that, I think you just a good way. Yeah, I think a good way to summarize it is today. It's kind of the nerd culture thing. We were probably like the very last generation where when we were kids, nerds and popular kids were still two separate groups if you, yeah. when you were in school. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely it was. If and you I were think... going to sit down at lunch and talk about, like, Dragon Ball Z, you weren't mm-hmm. at the popular kids' table. <laughs> no. Right? Like, no. <laughs> not at all. I think I only knew five people in my school that admittedly watched Dragon Ball. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know... Um, But I think that kind of, you know, loops us back into the conversation is, you know, I did not grow up with anime. I did not grow. I mean, I grew up with, you know, watching cartoons. I was one of those people that did not like watching live action stuff, such as like Clarice Explains It All, Fresh Prince of (laughs) Bel Air. Uh, You didn't like the Dan Schneider girls? No, I I wasn't a fan. Yeah. (laughs) Perry's... Perry's uh, original little boy boner was not for any of these girls on Nickelodeon. No. He, he surpassed that. He transcends the rest of us plebeians. I will say, I will say, I did love Keenan and Kel and all that, though. I love those shows. Oh, I, yeah. I think a lot of people, maybe not a lot of people, I think some people who were on all that went on to do a lot more. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, like good comedy and stuff. Like yeah, Amanda like, Show. Yep. Yeah, Amanda Show, like the Amanda Show. But, you know, like, you know, the hard hitters, like Lori Beth Dimberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I believe she had very vital information every time. You come. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're I know what you're getting at for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. It's almost weird to me looking back. I'm sure you watched a, a cursory amount of these weird live action kids shows that the Nickelodeon and then uh, more yeah, so Nickelodeon yeah. at that time. But oh, it yeah. was even back then, it was kind of weird to me. There was something bizarre about them because mm-hmm. they clearly didn't have crazy huge budgets. They had like sitcom no. budgets, right? Yeah. Most of the budgets from these networks went to the animated content because it got better audiences. And oh, yeah, the writing was like bumbling. I think would be an appropriate description. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And if you could recognize that at 11, then you're, you know, it's really (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. It's funny because, like, at the time, like, I really didn't think about that kind of stuff. But, you know, looking back on it, absolutely, you know. Uh, And even if you didn't think about it, you were, like, aware of it. You know, you were like, this This kind of sucks. I don't really know. I can't tell why, but I don't want to watch it. (laughs) Yes. No, you're absolutely right. Because I think it's a lot of stuff that could easily work in cartoons with professional voice actors that just don't work with terrible 90s kid actors, you know? Absolutely. I imagine there was a lot of crossover between, like, the writers for the animated and live action shows, and Mm -hmm. many of them them from the animated shows just didn't really know how to get gags and things across the same way. Yeah, yeah. It's a different kind of style. But I can see where... They could maybe writers back then, because I think that kids media was, I want to say, new ish. To yeah, that it degree. had definitely transitioned, right? Because in the 80s, cartoons and things were still heavily product driven, you know, like yeah. cartoons were basically long ads. And that mm-hmm. kind of changed in the 90s. And then I think they were kind of working without a template to make a lot of mm-hmm. these new shows when they decided they wanted to at least try to actually make them entertaining. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. So uh, to, to kind of, you know, keep with, uh, I guess, my story, I didn't watch any of that stuff. Like, I watched, you know, all the, the cartoons and stuff, so there was an interest. But I always thought that, like, I couldn't do any of that stuff because I had to be from a city. I always thought I have to either be from Mm. New York, I had to be from L.A. to even have a chance. Because I just, I I never knew of anyone that just, you know, left the town and left it for good and went off and do things. It's not like a a cult compound where, you know, you can't ever leave. Right, right. It's just a little more rural. Yeah, it is. It's just rural and uh, most of us are very comfortable with it. And Mm. we like that comfortability. Human beings love comfortability, even though comfortability is the enemy of, you know, progress and growth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the people that are still back home, they are what makes the community that I grew up in and uh, and whatnot make it so you want to come back to it. It's and you that, know that's a it's an interesting thing you just said. Not to get off on a, another huge thing. No, I, but let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> That, like, complacency, I think people from both sides of that kind of fling at the other one a little when they... Yeah. I know, because 
the town I'm from isn't super rural, but Western New York is it's not the Rust Belt, but it's culturally a lot like that. It's tons of mm-hmm. factories and things and like manufacturing. Yeah. And I know there's this attitude if you meet people who are their dads and them and probably eventually their kids are going to work in these blue collar jobs where mm-hmm. if you're trying to do if you're trying to do like an internet thing or even just entertainment in general it's yeah. you know that's ridiculous to them and yeah and that's the element of it where it's like they want that reliability which is really mm-hmm. important and i think oh absolutely the, yeah cuz i could totally see from when i had worked hourly jobs how you could fall into that you know you get used mm-hmm. to like every weekend you get off work and you take your paycheck and you go to the bar and you don't spend all of it. You don't. You're not an idiot. No. But you no. have a good time, and it's like mm-hmm. you can set your watch by it. Yeah. And that's really nice. If, especially, I think if you have hobbies and things in your life to do other than work. You, yes. But then, by the same token, a lot of those people don't give enough credit to artists who are really out there doing it, who are making good quality work and not just being lazy and you know yeah. pretending to do it because that's tough too. And the mm-hmm. downside to that, because obviously when you can set your own hours, that is really nice. The downside yeah, and to that is... and see what they see is just, you know, an artist that gets up whenever he wants to, doesn't have any real responsibilities. That's what they think, you know? And, exactly. I, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I, yeah, I don't blame them either. But then by the same token, I, what, what you said that made me think of this is it's a lot harder unless you're a really specific type of motivated person. If you do work a nine to five job that pays all your bills to still be out there trying to develop skills and like learn and things. And yeah, that's a benefit. I think I've found to doing artistic work and things is you're always the necessity of the work is you're always solving new problems and learning new things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a it's a give and take, and uh, it, it really is. I totally agree with you. But totally I feel I do you. feel especially like nowadays that more traditional mindset of just being diligent and getting your job done day in and day out is is definitely undervalued because you see people mm-hmm. disparaging that a lot too. Yeah, it's just funny how people make fun of bootstraps. The whole terminology. Exactly. Of bootstraps. Yeah. It's it's like, and I, I don't know. I think again, this is kind of getting to where we're very similar, and it's not, and it's more of a rarity. And I'm not saying this is a special snowflake thing. It's just, it really is. Just with the mix I just of to bring what it up. we are. I, yeah. I do think because in your story, mm-hmm. it could sound completely glossed over. It could sound like you'd be like, well, I'm the. I'm the artist, you know, and I got out of this yeah. tiny town, and I know that's not what you mean. Um, no, no. But I think that is an interesting misconception people have in a lot of these cases. Yeah. No, it's it's true. It absolutely is. I guess which gets me back on that. Uh, where we left off, I was saying how I thought you, you know, had to be from a city to have this opportunity. And so after opening, like, my third art set for Christmas, mm-hmm. I was like... Yeah. Thank you very much, but I don't want I don't want art stuff anymore. <laughs> I told <laughs> I told my family that and they're like, OK, <laughs> so in a way, I stopped doing art seriously for years, I think about a decade. But while that was way out of my thought process. Yeah, it's kind of where we started with this is I I played sports. I was a swimmer. Swimming was my number one sport. I'm actually wearing a Speedo brand t-shirt right now. And uh, then football was my second. And then track was my doing a sport when I wasn't playing football or swimming. And I was a good swimmer. I made nationals my senior year. I was the varsity running back uh, my senior year. You're, you know, what what most artist people that would be listening to this is, oh, he's a jock. He's a jock. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I, I guess you could say that, you know, but I never treated people like, you know, the, the typical thing because that's just not who we were. Because in a small, small town in a, in a, in a small school system and in even a, a relatively small graduating class. I graduated with 62 kids in my class. We grew up with each other. We knew each other. Yeah, and so I, we had like a family say, kind of situation. We treated everyone right. Yeah, of course. No offense. Your, uh, your class mm-hmm. that you graduated with was even smaller than mine, which I didn't go to a huge school. But yeah, the thing I was going to bring up, which I don't know if you ever experienced this. I think it's an interesting thing I noticed uh, yeah. was that I think around the time that we were growing up in high school and everything, the kind of stereotypical 80s bullying the like jocks bullying nerds was already yeah. on the decline out if the yeah. door in a way yeah and what i noticed actually happened more was actually more 
kind of, I don't want to call it bullying because it wasn't as much, but I guess more hazing. Like, jocks still hazed each other and, you know, picked yeah, on each other. Yeah, and, uh, of course, because that's, I, I, and I know that people can, they, they love making phrases. They love making the phrase toxic masculinity, but that's yeah, just what it yeah. was. That's a different thing completely, but I, mm-hmm. from, an out, from an outside perspective, think that's one of the big things people are s- still cling to the kind of jock stereotype of like the, yeah. the, the bully jock. And it's like, you know, I'm sure, I, I know for a fact there's of still course. people who are like that sometimes because there's yeah, always going to be. Course. But by and large, unless you got a lot of bad eggs and there's like a click mentality, I think kids in school overall are a bit nicer than they were. Um, I think so. Previously. I know I have two uh, older brothers who are eight and ten years older than me. I know my second oldest brother like got in a lot of fights and stuff when he was in school in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And that seemed like a bit more truth in television back then as far as yeah. how rough it could be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's when, when we were talking about how the bull Bullying, the you know the cliche jock bully kind of was starting to fade out is kind of when the whole everyone wants to be politically correct. People want to be oh, the, you know the whole, like on the yeah, right it gave side way of to the Everyone gets a trophy type thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the the whole everyone gets a trophy thing to this day has not really touched my specific area of Ohio. Like my little town was the fourth biggest town in my county. And like I said, it was just over like 1,400 people. And so that was all the little towns around us and thus our high school's athletic conference. But because all these towns are very similar to each other, like my little town of Fort Recovery was similar to the other nine communities. Very close-knit. Everybody knew each other. That's why a lot of people usually didn't get in trouble with like drugs and stuff because they knew that once someone lit up something, everyone in town and everyone in the county would know it kind of thing. so you just didn't yeah, want to do that. And there's a lot more blowback when you don't have that kind of crowd anonymity. That to anonymity, fall back on. yeah. So with that being said, in Fort Recovery, you had to drive 15 minutes just to get to the closest McDonald's. You had to drive 45 minutes to go to a typical average nice theater to watch movies. So like in life, living in those communities, you wanted to grow up and play sports because that's what everyone watched. Everyone in the town on Friday nights either went to the football games or the basketball games and you grew up going to those things and you grew up wanting to work your hardest to be able to be like those kids you know if they're kids yeah. now that were older but like you know be like those high school guys that you know right, were right. on the yeah, field when, and when represented yeah. And so what we did was we were athletes in big sports. I mean, even in the smaller sports, like swimming's a second tier sport. It is. But I was in a first year sport like football. But those were what represented our communities. And because we wanted to give our best, we wanted to be the best representation of our community. It just kind of had this inset, you know, hard work ethic kind of mindset. And um, if you weren't a farmer, you either, you know, worked in some sort of agricultural related thing. So the farmers, they always had good work ethic. But then even the right, even right, like the town kids like myself, we would kind of have that backwash work ethic too. Like we were saying, you played sports too, so you understood that work ethic and thus why we have a different viewpoint than your average, you know, kinda, artist. Yeah. yeah. It is very similar. My own experience, I didn't do scholastic sports until Mm -hmm. my senior year of high school I did wrestling so I guess I didn't have entirely the same kind of thing. I started you did like kickboxing and right. Yeah, I did martial yeah. arts from a young age, martial arts, then, that's it. which can be a whole it can that can be a whole other thing that's not really analogous to sports. But like you just said, I did get into kickboxing and then mixed martial arts, which mm-hmm. I think are mixed martial arts for sure is definitely stereotyped as a really broy toxic <laughs> masculinity sport. Yeah. And that was why I did try out and do wrestling for a year, mm-hmm. which was a, a fantastic experience. It definitely brings a different perspective and I think it's a really good thing to have especially when you're trying to do a kind of freelance self-motivated career Mm -hmm. like that it's good for any career really but yeah it's a rarity with what we do 
Yeah, it's a rarity to have that. I don't like to talk about like natural talent because I ultimately I don't think that's a real thing. But there is, in a sense, a much bigger tendency among artists, it seems like, to skate by on quote unquote natural talent. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really, really good at doing what they do. That's how they pull everything off. They can animate or, or illustrate or whatever. And when it's down to the wire, they come through and they do it. But some of these guys we know who are like that, like they don't work on a, a nine to five for the, to get their stuff done that's like not yeah. how they function no no absolutely not um and, i totally agree. not, I, not yeah. to say i do either you know but uh, i i yeah, try to like I mean, work a little bit every day more mm -hmm. oh absolutely uh i'm right now on a schedule where i can't work until like 10 and i don't usually get done working until like seven in the morning and oh, yeah. Well, I got to imagine with has been you're you know, like really cracking down to get all of it done. Yeah, but I, I can't work because <laughs> here's my Ritalin and other pills I take whenever it is the time frame where people are uploading and like posting on Twitter and posting on Facebook and, you know, post like uploading on like YouTube and stuff like that. There's always something, you know, changing or being posted by people. It's hard for me to be focused because I'm like, I might have missed something. And it's like, yeah. no, stop it. No, I know but what you mean. whenever it's at that time frame, like I said, there's really not that much going on. There's not a lot of that to distract yeah. you. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. It's almost strange you bring it up. I've been thinking about that just the last few days. How much easier it is to get down to work and work consistently when like no one's awake, you know, <laughs> and you. Oh, yeah. You're kind of isolated. You're a bit more extroverted than I am. So you don't seem like you really have a problem with isolation from your work. Mm -hmm. A big thing with me, I've struggled with the times I realized I'm just becoming a hermit because I'm <laughs> I don't have the like in, inherent need or desire to, to go out and interact with people, you know? Yeah. But I realize uh, I yeah, you you should. Even if you are a really introverted person, it's much healthier to do yeah, that. Yeah, you need to get out a little bit. I'm a little half and half. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to say half and half. A little this, a little that. Because lately, I've just been realizing that I've been in my room about maybe 90% of the time for the past... <sighs> Four or five days. <laughs> and granted, Viv's in her room working, Amin's in his... Well, I mean, if he's not in his room, he's out driving. Right, So, right. you know, like, it's there's not really a lot going on. Granted, I always have to go and, like, walk the or something like that, and usually I get out. But sometimes I do just need, like, okay, I got to get out. I go across the bar to this bar called Storytellers, and I just throw yeah. darts. Oh, I just fun. throw darts all night. Yeah, I love throwing... Apparently, I, I'm not a natural... But I'm getting better at darts. <laughs> darts are, um, I darts really are fun. I used to, I had a dartboard in my college apartment that me and uh, oh, yeah? my friends would screw around with all the time. It's oh, a weird man. thing how people can get improbably good at darts. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You, you <laughs> Until you play with a bunch of people, you would not believe like how precise people who play all the time can be. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> it really is. Um, but, I mean, that's what I do, you know, sometimes just to get out. Right. <laughs> I get... I feel like this is uh, this is like one of those Christmas Carol things where like, you know, they go through a story and then sometimes they stop and do something else and then they go back to the story and stop and do something <laughs> else, which I'm fine with. It's, I, it's fine. I was just going to I was just going to get to when I got to college and stuff. Oh, yeah, of course. I forgot. Yeah. We didn't even like it. Yeah, your, yeah. We just yeah, got yeah. to like me and me doing sports in high school. <laughs> 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 no, well, no, 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 Perry no, no. Prime. It's, we got to the, the yes, you know, the, absolutely. The studly young Buck Perry that everyone. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, it's we, so I true because I haven't. This way, yeah. I'll put it this way: we got to the Perry that everyone wants as the alternate costume in the fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. If I could go back, <laughs> if I could go back to like that body. I'd be like, yep, we're good, boys. Let's go. But, oh, yeah. Uh, same same oh, here. Absolutely. Oh, man. It's so bad. Uh, you know, that's something. I'll make this as brief uh -huh. as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's something to do with that. It's got to be to some extent that your metabolism at that age. But mm -hmm. high school athletics in amazingly short amounts of time, like carve these kids into oh. such unbelievable physical condition. Now, it's, oh, yeah. now this sounds like weird and gay but it, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah uh, no i so i good. i know what you mean <laughs> oh 
uh, dude, especially swimming. I will say this right now. With swimming, and I mean wrestling probably even more. Wrestling is the craziest and like a physically taxing sport. From what I've heard as far as athletic science stuff, which my mm -hmm. knowledge is very limited, so if, if people yell at me for getting this wrong, it's that's why. But mm -hmm. wrestling, swimming, and gymnastics, I think, are supposed to be the yeah. ones that are, like, insane for whipping oh, you yeah. into shape. Yeah. I mean, like, we did, we, our school was too small to have wrestling, uh, but I know that wrestling is, like, number one. Uh, like, just, just oh, know Oh, yeah, it. yeah. But, like, with swimming, with swimming, you're using all of your muscle groups at once for long periods of time and oh, so absolutely and we don't really have to worry too much about dropping weight or anything like that like wrestlers do um, well the thing that's I, that's impressive with swimming is like you're doing a thing that the human body is, is mostly not, exactly. not evolved to do yeah it's so true, you know, and that's why swimming has records are getting broken by seconds every year, yeah. every year. You know, people are going to like I mean, Mark Spitz was the, the creme de la creme decades ago, but now yes, he I'll would. I know who that is. Oh, no, no. He is the guy that had the most Olympic gold medals. He was a swimmer oh, okay. um, before Michael Phelps. But right, gotcha. his times now, I think that most high school state qualifiers in most of the big states could beat Mark Spitz's times. Oh, wow. It's, yeah. I mean, that makes sense, though, like mm -hmm. what we were, we were just saying. Yeah, I mean, because the technique is changing because it's just not a sport, you know, we're, we're evolved to do. But after I graduated high school, I went down to Arkansas where my dad played baseball down there and a lot of my family went and I went to a school called Harding University and I was there for broadcasting. I wanted to be someone that worked on like news channels and stuff and it didn't take it seriously. I took it as seriously as I did high school and I was a solid C <laughs> student, you know, C's get degrees, boys. But, uh, you know, so I took it about as easy <laughs> or as, you know, as serious as that and, uh, I didn't. I think I may have passed one class, but I withdrew because of homesickness and whatnot. And also, my dad died like a couple months prior to me going to school. So that was also a thing. I'm like, I, I can't do this. So I go home and then I start going to community college. Not a community college. It was a branch from an actual like university that was in my county, which is called the Wright State University Lake Campus. But most of the people just called it Mercer and Always County High School. <laughs> So I actually went to school to be a PE teacher there and uh, because yeah <laughs> so because <laughs> because I at the time because I was living back at home in for recovery so I actually was the swim coach the high school swim coach mm. for about two years and so it just worked out you know if right. I would graduate with a teaching degree especially in like as they call it kinesiology then yeah that would work out took about as serious as the last two schools so failed out of that one <laughs> and uh, so then I was working at my family's tractor dealership and I'm like I guess this is life this is what I'm going to be the rest of my life and it would be fine because I it, mm -hmm. it was financially stable in an agricultural community. Yeah, it's comfortable. Um, it, exactly. Exactly. Full circle right there. But I started dating a girl whose mom was a graphic design professor at the second school I failed out of. She saw some of my doodles I did and she's like, you ever, you ever think about pursuing this? I'm like, <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> So, you know, I'm like, nah, not really. And she's like, oh, have you ever done digital? I'm like, nope, never touched an Adobe program, never touched anything, you know, like digital. I don't even think I touched MS Paint before. And so, you know, I'm like, I don't know. She's like, oh, well, here, here's a here's an extra tablet I have. And here are the Adobe programs for free. And I was like, all right, just to screw around with. I saw Flash and I'm like, oh, that's what all the uh, that's all the Newgrounds people use. Okay, all right. And so, like, I watched some tutorials. I made my first crappy cartoon. And she's like, you're going to school for this. And I'm like, okay, all right, whatever. Maybe I, I can just, you know, go to a school, you know, for a couple of years and not have to uh, worry about uh, manure, like, washing manure spreaders or something like that yeah. for a couple of years. Get another free ride, essentially. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I enrolled in the Art Institute of Ohio Cincinnati. And before I was going, I'm like, I, I was kind of nervous because I'm like, all these people have been wanting to be artists their whole life. I just started taking art seriously a couple months ago. I was 21. 
So like I said, 11's when I stopped, 21's when I got back on the horse. Yeah. And I go in there after the first two days. I'm like, this is what I was supposed to be doing the whole time. So I graduated with some of my best friends. You've met Cole and Zach. Mm-hmm. And we pretty much like stampeded through that animation program, just taking names and stomping yeah. on. You guys, man, you guys have some great stories. Anyone who's <laughs> listening to this and has not seen it, Look up the Howdy Mobile documentary because <laughs> it's it's a trip. Oh. It's fantastic, oh. man! Thanks for that shout out. I'm glad. I'm honestly glad you find that interesting. Like, I honestly find it really funny, man. So I, if people are interested enough to be listening to hear about you, I mm-hmm. assume they're gonna love that. Yeah, it's called Seen Not Found, the the story of the Art Institute Howdy Mobile. But yeah, so go check that out. But we had some great stories. I'm sure you've been in conversations with us when we talk about some of like the idiots that we went to school with and whatnot. And, yeah. But yes, I mean, so I graduated. I did some like commercial work for some people, kind of freelance, whatnot. But my first job job was a I was an adjunct professor at the second school I failed out of. <laughs> So I came back and was teaching. <laughs> and <laughs> did I, now, did I already know you at that time or was that before? That? Yeah. Um, th- yeah. You knew me at the time. Okay. Um, th- so like, I was going to say, I, think, I thought I remembered that. Yeah. We started hanging out. Uh, oh, that's kind of the end of the story with that. That's how I okay. you know, am to where I am. The rest but is history, as they say. The rest is history. <laughs> but yeah, we started hanging out like by my last two quarters uh, sometime, at, at AI. Yeah, I was going to say it would have been sometime yeah. in... 2015, I believe. Yeah, like mid-2015. Yeah. Because we were on the Sleepy Cabin collab that didn't come out till two years later. <laughs> and yeah. and I, that I was thanks up. to you to actually yes. make it keep we going. People who watched it <laughs> seem to enjoy it. I'll, I'll say yes. that. Yes, yes. That's, uh, that's the best way to put it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that was my first time ever talking to anybody online. And um, Yeah, same then, with me, actually. That yeah. kind of group that was much yeah. smaller than and now is is artsy fartsy, which is mm-hmm. whispered in hushed tones amongst the online animation community. It kind of is. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> is. <laughs> Especially with all the purging we do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, oh, you but, know, I mean, in a in a slightly mm-hmm. more serious sense, yeah, it's a lot of people we know we keep contact with through. It's a Discord group now. Mm-hmm. Used to be a you Skype know, group. That's how it started. It's a convenient way to stay in touch with everybody. Yeah, and you know what? Like, in all honesty, like you guys, and this is <laughs> all right. Here we go, getting all gay. But <laughs> I, all, in all honesty, <laughs> you guys have become like some of my closest, you know, closest friends. You know. Um, oh, absolutely, man. The time I met Dan and everybody and like got brought into that whole group when it was on Skype, mm-hmm. I, that was... We're two of the oldest thing. members, too. We're two of the oldest members. Yes. Yeah. Weirdly yeah. enough, uh, who, who were mm-hmm. still on there a lot. Mm-hmm. But that was a huge help to me just as far as like maintaining my psychological well-being, because that was when... Yeah. Uh, that was... Without, you know, getting too deep into it, that was when my dad, Mm -hmm. who passed away at the beginning of this year, uh, started Mm -hmm. to... I was taking care of him, and he was having a lot of problems with dementia and stuff. So I was really... It was good to have friends, is the gist of it, at that time. And Mm -hmm. everybody I'm pretty close with now. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I tell you what, man, like... There was something magical about MAGFest last year. Oh, yeah. There really was. was a, there really was. It was just, you know, uh, I won't have rose-colored glasses on for it. The sleeping mm-hmm. situation was just awful. Yeah. That sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah. like, we had probably yeah. eight or nine people in a room just you trying to... There you know, was three rooms. Three rooms, right? Yeah, Split between so. more than 30 people in our, <laughs> yeah. in our specific group. That's, it, you know, kind of how it started. There was yeah. basically not enough room on the floor in the room I was supposed to be in to comfortably sleep, which, in fairness... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Johnny uh, slept in the closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, in <laughs> fairness, if me and Mitch were more, like, average size, it may not have been as bad, but, like, yeah. uh, son of a Mitch show, shout out to, to him. Mm-hmm. Our boy. Yeah, he is six foot six. And I'm six foot two, 
Mm -hmm. In cramped quarters, it's even more of a problem for the two of us. <laughs> and it was at the point where what I did after like the first <laughs> night was I would just partying winds down. Everybody's like, all right, we're going to bed. I'm like, okay. And I would go down to the arcade showroom where they had just yeah. tons and tons of games. And I would go around mm -hmm. and just play Castlevania and all the, and like they had all these old mm -hmm. games, which was pretty cool. But I would just play them until like my eyes hurt. I was so tired. And then yeah. I would go back up and lie down in this contorted position and pass out because I was exhausted. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. But so those were all the bad points. Of the bad parts. Past. It was yeah, an amazing yeah. time. It really was. Seeing everybody. I think one of the cool things was, like, that was the first time a lot of us were hanging out in real life. You know, yeah, actually yeah. face to uh, face. A number of people we know had been up for the 2016 MAGFest, but I don't mm -hmm. think either of us were. No. Yeah, so it was meeting a ton of people who we had had numerous Contact conversations with, for, about, with. Yeah. Uh, for for a year and a half at that point. Right, and never met in person. And if you're not familiar with the way a microphone can distort your voice, meet somebody that you've only been friends with over Skype or something, and you'll be very surprised at how <laughs> different people can actually sound. Oh, man, I did, never even thought about that. I did never even thought about notice that. that with no, I, I didn't notice. Oh, I did man. not notice that. Uh, yeah. Josh. Josh's voice, his Twitter tag is at Turbo Fascist. Turbo Fascist. Uh, uh, so I'm glad me saying that will already get this taken down on several yep. platforms. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> but no, he, uh, he's a good friend of ours. His voice sounds like a full octave lower over. Internet yeah, I could. Calls. Yeah, that's so funny. I never, never even thought about that, but you're so right. Um, Magfest was a it, it was a ton of fun. Just trying to think of all the fun stuff that happened. Joey, our Joey was walking around with just boxers on, yeah. like in the cold, in the dead of night. Oh, yeah. Were you with us when it was like 2 a.m.? When you guys night. went an adventure. I don't think I was there when, when, oh, okay. when you guys yeah, it was now. me, Dan, at William Be Good on Twitter, NG Tyler of Century Nights fame. Mm -hmm. And who else? Oh, uh, Trev, our Australian friend. Mm -hmm. And I forget who uh, else. Kranz. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's his, I, what's, what's his, what's his Twitter? I think his Twitter or, thing is Yachons, but I think that's also a band oh, or something. Yeah. So I've, <laughs> I don't yeah, know if that's I don't helpful. Know. I don't know. But at any rate, I think Dan was like, oh, you guys, uh, there's probably a bar still open. You guys want to go to a bar or something? And we were like, yeah, because we didn't have. Yeah, you invited me out, but I think I was doing something else. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. And so we all head out and it's this just cutting cold because it was like. 30 degrees or less the whole time we were there January for and, yeah, and, and also and, uh, and, the wind is brutal coming off the ocean oh, there yeah. so it feels awesome. like around zero walking around yeah and it's absolutely <laughs> it's like two in the morning and we're we might have tried to go to the bar and it, I can't remember if it wasn't open that night at all or mm. if we were only able to get in for like 15 minutes or something and get like yeah. one drink and then we're just outside the hotel and we ended up i know there's a photo somewhere of everyone looks stone-faced and <laughs> trev and and somebody else are sitting on the those uh you know those like animals on playgrounds with the spring underneath them mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like what trev's yeah. sitting on we all just have this these like blank stoic expressions <laughs> It's the middle of the I night. know the picture. I know the picture. It's a good picture. Yeah, oh my bad. gosh. Uh, um <laughs> Oh dude, well, uh what was the uh the first thing we do was we go to that, that oh, one yeah, bar the, that had the bowl. What was it? The Cadillac Ranch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was like our first bowl. that was like our first get to sit down and actually hang out with people in real life kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, and we had this um, like enormous table we got there. Mm-hmm. You and I were sitting by each other, and I think I did something that made you laugh. I don't you, remember what it was, yeah, though. Yeah, you said something that, like, slew me. I think you got Mexican pizza, so it was, like, that super crispy, thin crust. And I think you took a mm. bite of it, and, like, the whole thing broke in your hand. And you, <laughs> you threw a mouthful of food, you shouted, This pizza's too crispy! And that <laughs> killed me for a solid, like, minute. Because... <laughs> <It's stupid. laughs> Oh, that's great. 
Pizza. We also like rode the bulls and stuff too. The and, mechanical uh, bull. I was champ. I wore the pink. Oh hat. yeah. You and Tyler lasted Dude, for quite a while. Dude, we killed that bull. We killed it. Magfest prom. Did you go to Magfest prom? I don't think I went to that. I don't remember oh, what man. I was doing. Oh, you, you missed out. Oh, it, <laughs> You missed I out and you didn't to... miss out. Okay, so, which we should have went to Proto Men because that was a better concert. The tell the story, when no one knew that I was coming, um, that Cole, Zach, and I were coming, I also told Annie, like, hey, there's MAGFest prom. Let's dress up. So, like, okay. I'm like, tell everybody. Tell everybody to bring, like, you know, something nice. It could be as nice as they want or at the very least, like, a button-up, you know, in khakis or something like that, you know? Uh -huh. I come out with, like, my whole get-up. I have, like, my red Satan blazer. I look all crisp and all that because I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. And then Annie came out, and she had, like, a, a, a little dress on and all that, and I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And she's like, you think anyone else is going to do this? Like, I don't know. I hope so, but I don't think so. And right as we say that, everyone comes out. I think there was 30 of us <laughs> just flood out. And they all had, like, something nice on. And it was just awesome. Like, it's happening. <laughs> and so, like, <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. So we go, we just, we're marching. We're like a group of 30 Pikmin. Um, just like marching <laughs> towards the Magfest prom. It's cool because like with our group, I think we were the biggest group, individual group. Probably. You know? It was just like a whole swarm of us going to the Magfest prom. And so we all come in our big conglomerate and we had some people tag along too. Like, what is this group? Is this, is there like a famous person in this group? That's why everyone's following. So we had like three tag alongs. I, that was really weird. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so we all got in and we get in there and we're like, we're like, yeah, let's get rowdy. Yeah. And the, the band that was playing, bless their hearts, but they were playing background music to obscure Japanese video games. <laughs> not not <laughs> really your speed. Nobody's speed. Nobody was dancing. <laughs> It was the worst. And we're all looking at each other like, what's going on? So we're trying to dance in our big group and like, you know, try to like get closer and like try to get other people to dance. And they're just like, we, un we respect what you're trying to do. We just can't do it. And I'm like, I know. So there was this couple like this dude in a tux and like this chick, hot chick. I'd, I'd give her like a seven. But she was sitting there in like this nice ball gown. And she had her arms crossed and just was like, <sighs> Just, just had like just the sour scowl. Yeah, just furious. She did all. She all got all dolled up for nothing. Yeah. And her boyfriend Man. was just like, "I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." <laughs> what do you? Yeah, I mean, what are they? That's, they should have proto men. They should have proto men do the thing. I, it seems like any of the stuff that they had, it, uh, other than that, was was yeah. solid music to dance to. Yeah, absolutely. So we <laughs> we got it was Josh. Tyler and I, and I think like maybe five or six other people followed behind us in our group, and we made our way to the front. We pushed our way to the front. It really wasn't that hard because no one was into it, so no one was really dying to be to the front. Yeah. And we just all start cheer chanting, <laughs> Cotton Eye Joe! Cotton Eye Joe! <laughs> and we got everyone to chant Cotton Eye Joe! <laughs> oh. They would not play Cotton Eye Joe. They didn't play it? No. Man. <laughs> it was so, was a, so They were heartbreaking. dedicated to their shtick, you know. You gotta give them that. They were. They were. But, man. That was MAGFest prom. Ugh. <laughs> MAGFest in general, man. Oh. Um, <sighs> lightning round. Okay, cool, yeah. All awesome. Right. Lightning uh, round. Here we go. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. Lightning round. I'm yeah. not gonna put any sound effects. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make the sound effect. I, so every time you do lightning round, this is what this is what they hear. Okay, this is gonna be a wacky. Okay, so they're just gonna go lightning round, lightning round. Let's go, let's go, and that's it. And you can put like some thunder behind me. Okay, and stuff like that. perfect. <laughs> okay, solid. So yeah, there, there's there's okay. your clip. <laughs> do you have any spooky stories, mm. or if not, alternatively, what's uh, like the most scared you've been in like for your okay. life 
I understand it's lightning round, so I won't do my typical long version of stories like I, like the audience has understood as of now. Uh, a couple of friends and I, we went to this place, I think it was like maybe a year or two after we graduated high school. We were just sitting on my friend's porch. So we go to this bridge, like on the north side of the county called Crybaby Bridge. It seems like everyone has a Crybaby Bridge, but this one was like historical, like where some guy actually like killed his kid because it wasn't his. And so the story goes like, if you drive to the, you know, onto the bridge at night uh, and you turn off your car, you won't be able to start it and it won't start until you push it off the bridge, not mm. push it, you know, into the water, but, you know, onto the other side of the bridge. Right. And that uh, if you sit on the bridge at night, either hear like the wailing of babies or, you know, like the spirits or something like that. And yeah, our car didn't start and we had some paranormal activity. So it was. Yeah, huh. that, that's that's a short version of it. Yeah. It was yeah. really weird. So that is it's odd for sure. Lightning around, lightning around. around. Here we go. That's it. That's all. That's really all I had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lightning around.